Welcome to this APMG Midday Mentor episode. Today, our mentor is Andres Rebollo. Welcome, Andres, and thank you for bringing us your public private partnership expertise. Thank you. It's really a pleasure to be with you, Chiara. Andres is the CEO at K Infra, created in March 2016, uh, a company that focuses uh, on PPP knowledge and PPP related capacity building and training. Andres is also the lead author of the CP3P guide. So, Andres, you funded K Infra five years ago. How many courses did you already deliver and in how many countries and languages? Um, so far, we, we, we have done a, a little bit more than 160 courses um, in uh, 40 something different countries. Uh, 34, if I'm not wrong, uh, were courses, uh, I mean, were different governments that we have trained. Uh, but we have delivered courses in other in other countries as well in an open mode for 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 public people, uh, for for uh, public in general, and uh, also we have been training. Uh, we have trained all the relevant uh, multilateral multilateral agencies. In in, in total, uh, I think that today we are around uh, three thousand uh, five or six hundred candidates already trained in these years, and in different languages, uh, which is. Yes, because um, I, something that is incredible um, from this certification and all the support of the multilateral uh, banks who are the, the, own, the intellectual property owners and from APMG is this effort of uh, giving accessibility of all this uh, training. So there is a progressive process of, uh, of uh, translating all the materials and the program itself in different languages. We have been training already in uh, in all official uh, language versions, which are um, English, of course, and Spanish, French, Portuguese. Uh, we are starting now with the Russian, and uh, you at APMG have another another language cover, which is uh, Serbian, specific for for Serbian people, and Chinese, which is very relevant. But uh, so far, we are not training in in Chinese. We don't have uh, yet uh, a Chinese trainer. Not yet, yes. Could you Not please yet. describe the PPP guide? What is it and how is it organized? Yes, um, the guide the guide is it was constructed around uh, the, the the PPP cycle around a, a, a more or less more or less and we we may, we may discuss about this later on uh, a standardized vision of what should be the uh, management of a PPP project from the public perspective. The guide has eight chapters. Uh, the chapter one is, is, uh, is for the foundation exam. It's an introductory chapter about PPPs and, uh, and setting, up, setting the, 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 the common language that we, will, that we will use all around the guide and introducing all the phases of this cycle. Chapter two, which is uh, already in the preparation level, because the certificate has three levels. Chapter two is about frameworks, establishing the signing a PPP framework. Uh, and then with chapter three, we start the, the, the cycle itself. Uh, chapter three is about um, identifying a project, a, a project solution for the society, and screening the potential as a PPP. Then we have chapter four, which is um, uh, preparing and, and appraising, evaluating a PPP project, and chapter five, which is uh, the third phase of the cycle, which is structuring and drafting all the all the tender pack. That is two from two to two to five. These four chapters uh, are the practitioner level related to what we call or you call preparation. And then part of chapter five is for execution level when when we are detailing the the tender documents and the contract. And then we have chapter six, which is the phase related to managing the tender itself. And chapter seven and eight is about the contract management, the last phase of the of the of the cycle. So, in summary, the guide is is following this idea of a progressive process from the public perspective, but always taking into account the private view, taking into account in the form of how you need to uh, control that a project is commercially feasible. What are the concerns of the private party? 
the bidder, uh, how a bidder, there is some kind of extra appendix from exclusively from the private perspective, which is uh, the appendix, a special appendix for chapter six, which is uh, the process from the private perspective of preparing, I mean, building up a team, a consortium, and preparing and submitting a bid uh, and raising the financing. No? But apart from that, general perspective is from the public, uh, public side. Public. But Andres, what is the value of a comprehensive and standardized training uh, through the PPP guide on a so complex subject such as public-private partnership? Yeah, there is a, um, a challenging question, I think, because that, that is at the heart of the sense of the guide and the certificate. No? I would say that there was a, there was originally a, and it's there. I mean, a, a, when when creating this this product under the initiative of all the multilateral banks, uh, a name to uh, what that was and is to have a, 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 a to create a, or or help to have standard knowledge uh, and 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 access to a standard. Uh, best practice all around the world when managing PPPs, and um, when when having this standardized uh, description, knowledge, uh, good practice description, etc., the, there is something that is very interesting. That is that the the capacity building around uh, an a standard like the CP3P becomes more uh, affordable, becomes cheaper, becomes more accessible because you are dealing with the standardized materials, um, including your presentations as a training organization, including your tests, etc. All those materials have to be assessed by APMG to protect the integrity and the respect for these standards. And in the end, everybody is using the same standard, so it's less costly to create a, a course it's less costly for a training organization to organize, have a trainer duly prepare and deliver a training. So PPP specialized training becomes cheaper than when somebody goes to a very high level, excellent uh, training organization or a consultant company asking for a tailor-made PPP course. That is more expensive because that company has to create the materials, they have to put their own case studies, etc. Here, everything is cheaper because it's standardized. The, the, and, and apart from that, there is a, this beauty of the standard. And uh, I say this because I remember perfectly how all this idea of a CP3P being uh, uh, creating some standards for, 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 for knowledge and for best practice was quite criticized from, uh, by some people, okay? Not few people. We under something that is correct, which is listen, you cannot standardize this because PPPs is so heavily dependent on uh, the particularities of each country, especially the legal tradition, their laws, their markets, that there is no one single solution that fits any single size, any single country. Well, the reality is that it's possible to standardize and that is a success. Why? Because no matter the particularities of the country, uh, PPP is about private party, public party, and there is a, there, there, if it's not there in a country, there should be a respect for a common ground. I mean, no matter the framework of a country, a well-prepared project is a well-prepared project. Uh, what should be covered in a PPP law, to give certainty, is what should be covered in a PPP law. It's only the details of a framework or the processes, what can diverge or be different in different countries, but that is not diminishing at all the value of having a common ground for any single country. It's really exciting. It's really exciting when, when, when one can train a government, including a quite uh, experienced staff in a particular government, mostly emerging markets, but not only emerging markets. We have been training, for example, we are training US government, we are training uh, Dutch government, but mostly it's emerging markets. It's so exciting when they when they say, "Listen, this course and these materials are, are helping me first to better understand my own procedures, and second uh, to 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 realize and and and, and find uh, room for improving my processes, for for tweaking, changing, adopting other good practice of other countries." So, 
I'm sorry, but any guy that said some years ago, this is a bad idea, you cannot standardize, they were mistaken. What is the importance of learning and applying the best international practices in this field uh, in order to carry out sustainable projects from all the points of view? So, I mean, economic, uh, financial, fiscal, technical, and so on. So we, we are talking about uh, we are talking about preparing and pricing a project. So a pricing is the name used in the guide, but it could be also evaluating, assessing. Many countries know that phase about uh, as the feasibility assessment. No preparing and, and assessing the project in order to be approved before announcing the the, 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 the project. That is that is the most relevant phase. That is the most relevant phase in the cycle. That is the longest chapter, <laughs> chapter four. It's like the double of the other chapters. Uh, so it's not a coincidence. Huh? And, the, and the thing is that um, uh, there is the, the, the real problem with the uh, infrastructure gap all around the world, uh, mostly in emerging, emerging markets, developing economies, the real problem is not the money. It's not, it's not um, availability of financing. It's not the existence or not of, uh, of, of money, res financial resources to be invested. The problem is the lack of uh, properly prepared projects. That is all the problem. That is the most problematic thing that is um, hitting and, and, and making the real problem and not the lack of, of, of money or funds. And um, uh, so it's, it's very relevant to be able to prepare adequate projects. And uh, the harm can be uh, incredible. I mean, if, 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 if a government does not prepare properly a project before tendering out, first, probably they will suffer delays, significant delays. Second, if they tender out, um, it's not, it's not one or two or three isolated cases. There is plenty of cases that a government do not receive bids. This is harming the reputation of the government in addition of just a waste of money and time for everybody, okay? But it is. it can be even worse. It can be even worse. If you receive bid, a bid, and the project is not properly prepared, it will be worse, paradoxically, because then the project will blow up at some point of time. For sure, and that is going to be very costly. Uh, that will that that will finalize with an early termination, costing a lot of money, probably an uh, international arbitration or in the courts or whatever. But there is something that is worse than terminating the project, which is in many cases being one or two years renegotiating the project, making a really bad deal in the end because the deal was not properly structured from the beginning, was not properly tested. It was not properly defined. So, project failures are, are, are incredibly linked to things that are under control. Project failures all around the world is a, in a very minority uh, number are related to non-controllable issues, rather than being uh, linked to things that we can control, which is our own work as a government and the advisors preparing properly the project. Okay. Tell us about other sensitive phases of the PPP process cycle, such as the different approaches to tendering uh, in contract management uh, phases, uh, and also the importance of knowing how to apply and manage uh, them correctly. You, we, we have said that uh, the, the most important, the most important phase probably is um, is prepare, preparation of projects, preparation, appraisal, evaluation of projects. Um, it's chapter four. Well, we, 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 we should not forget that uh, uh, it, is not, it is not a single phase, okay? Because uh, as explained in chapter three, there should be a preliminary, uh, I mean, quicker and, and, and faster process of reviewing. We call it a screening in the guide, okay? Um, just looking for big gaps or big problems before you decide, the government decide to move for the proper, the proper appraisal. So, uh, but then after that, we have the structuring and drafting phase. 
and uh, such a phase, of course, is relevant. What do we do in that phase? Uh, not just as described in the guide, but in real life, in, in, when, when, when managing a, a PPP from a, from a uh, public perspective. We fine-tune the structure that we have created when testing the project. The financial structure, how I'm going to pay this guy for the service. The risk structure, how I'm going to uh, allocate risks, looking for exceptions, for risks that I will share, or I will retain as a government. And we fine-tune the procurement strategy, the details of how do I want to turn out this project, which is something to be defined as well at the end of the appraisal, appraisal phase. So it's, it's very relevant because we are detailing everything and we are finally testing that the PPP project is commercially feasible, is accepted by the market, and is going to be a success in, 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 in tender terms because we will do a uh, sounding market at, at that moment. So it's very important as well. But, but everything is coming from a price. Then when we tender out, ah, the thing didn't finish. The job of the project team didn't finish. We need to manage the tender. Of course, the main, uh, the, the foundations of what should we do to manage properly the tender is in the tender documents themselves, is in the request for proposal, because we have designed in the previous phase all the rules of the game. But there, is, there are many things uh, during that phase that cannot be covered in the RFP. There are managerial things, there are managing uh, matters that are internal, that are covered in the, in the, tender manage, in the managing a tender uh, step as described in the guide. For example, how to how to approach the evaluation from a practical manner, how to create a team, whether to separate uh, the experts so each expert will evaluate one proposal or not, how to face a situation of one only bidder, how to face a situation of no bidders and so on. So there are uh, many practical things that are, that are pretty, pretty much uh, covered in the guide, including as a special appendix, as I mentioned before, the vision of the private sector in, in preparing a bid. And then, Okay, we finished the tender, it was a success because we have a proposal, we have hopefully more than one proposal and we select the best one and we will sign the contract. At that point is when it start, starts the uh, uh, phase number five of the process, the contract management during construction that is covered in chapter seven, okay, including establishing the strategy. You know? And then we have in, in chapter eight, contract management during operations. And these two uh, chapters, this whole phase, contract management, is really, uh, I mean, is, is, to me, something incredible to have this, this material there available and, and, and this, uh, how do we see, how, how can we say, um, this, this, level of, this level of importance that the multilaterals uh, gave to this phase, because, because it's, the, it's the, how, how could I say, is the new territory. It's really, it's really everybody, is really behind what it should be. Every, all the governments is a very is there a very limited number of governments quite quite developed like Australia, UK, Canada, that they have established really uh, policies and, and 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 practical guidelines in their countries to manage the contracts of the PPP. But in in general speaking is the, how do you say, the ugly duck, no? Uh, nobody cares about that, because it's like saying, ah, I am delegating to the private partner the project. Ah, it's not my problem, it's not my problem. They don't realize that there is, there is, this is very hard, uh, this is harming a lot uh, the PPP programs, because it still is a public investment, a PPP project. It still is a public project, and a government should be accountable, and the government should manage the relationship with the private party, the threats, the risks, and so on. So uh, it's really important that phase and it's pretty well covered in the clinic. Which professional development opportunities does this certification offer in terms of uh, career opportunities? I mean, what is beautiful from PPPs is that it's multidisciplinary. Okay? And, um, and as such, uh, it, it, PPPs can be a development in the career of people with uh, different backgrounds, from uh, people that coming from financing, people coming from legal, 
expertise, people coming from technical expertise, from economic expertise, or just from public management expertise. No, that, That's one first thing. It's like a specialization in the career of somebody, but it's not linked to financing necessarily, either legal or engineering. It's because it's multidisciplinary. You need to have a, a, a general view of different aspects. No, Having said that, uh, I mean, the PPP career, the PPP professional, as a clear space, as a in terms of opportunity for for jobs in international uh, financing institutions, multilateral development banks. I mean, there are very powerful teams and increasing in size in any development bank, either global or regional or national. Okay. Number two. Uh, Knowing about PPP is really necessary in certain departments of a, of a bank. When they are dealing with project finance, departments dealing with project finance, they have, I mean, from uh, 10, 20 years ago, most uh, developed banks, they have uh, teams specializing in infrastructure financing. And uh, I would say that 50, 70 percent of what they do in infrastructure financing is related to the PPP framework. Okay, because PPP is about infrastructure, but uh, uh, under a, a specific modality of contracting and financing infrastructure. Then people will have a opportunity in the field of the developers, the promoters, contractors, construction contractors, engineering companies, uh, companies operating public services, water, transportation, etc. No? The developer, what will constitute the private party, uh, the private party. And, uh, and then I would say that probably the, in, in statistical terms, the most uh, of the opportunities in, uh, in, in, in searching for jobs would be the companies that are uh, consultant companies, advisors, legal advisors, uh, financial advisors, uh, transport consultants, and so on. So, so there is a good variety of places where somebody could develop um, his her career in the field of PPPs. It's not just linked to uh, road constructors or it's not just linked to uh, legal advisors, but all of them, all of them. Thank you, Andres, and congratulations on your work and on the first five years at K Infra. Thank you very much. So uh, you will make another interview in five years to me? Well, yeah, also before, because we need your knowledge, we need your skills, maybe another deeper interview if you want. Okay. <laughs> I will be there. Thank you, bye. All right, Kira.